Have you ever wondered what goes into creating an episode of UH? Be a fly on the wall as Jay and Beck brainstorm, banter, and offer a glimpse into their madness. It may be crazy, personal, messy, but hey, it's how they get shit done. So kick off your shoes, pour yourself a drink of the day, grab that comfy throw blanket, and attempt to relax as you enter into the minds of the maniacs. Welcome to The Writing Sessions. This is Season 2, Episode 12, The Clink, The Writing Sessions. (laughs) Where'd you get that truck? Uh, it, It fell off a truck. I learned that early, too, off the truck. Did you? The neighborhood suddenly got all these, like, Atari games when it was at its heyday. And uh, when I got my Atari, and I'm playing Frogger, I hear him in the background talking to his buddies, saying, yeah, it fell off the truck, you know what I mean? And I was like, what does that mean? I'm like, did it actually fall off the truck? <laughs> I didn't even learn that until I was much older. <laughs> that's, that's in the same realm as to the farm. Yeah. What point in a normal person's life do they learn that? Well, you gotta grow up on the north side, apparently. Yeah, like... Here, Beck, take this printer back. Uh, do you have the receipt for it? Uh, no, it fell off the truck. Yeah. Well, it where am I bringing it? Whichever, staples, wherever you want. And then I thought it was, like, in Red Dawn, when they're all kind of really hungry, mm-hmm. and they're in the mountains, and a truck comes by, and a fucking box falls off it. It's got cereal and shit in it. And I'm like, oh, I guess things really do fall off the truck. (laughs) You know? This is when I was like 10. (laughs) I'm like, oh, it's like the Wolverines. Like, this fucking trucks are dropping boxes left and right. But really, it's Joe Pesci looking to going, give me the fucking keys. And he slaps him in the face. Get in the fucking back. I'll fucking do you. Right. Fuck you. And then he gets in the back. You know, they put a 50 in his wallet and tell him to forget it. Please. It's the police. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You want to keep going? We can keep going. We'll read it so far. Section code 385, paragraph 4 of the soliloquy, third stanza, fifth page of book 12, volume 24, third edition, sentence 13, sonnet, 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 haiku, in the fourth indentation judicial <laughs> My name is Mario, and I'm an ex Today, I'll be teaching a professional sommelier how to make wine effective in prison. So Pruno is a prison wine. It's alcoholic beverage made from apples, oranges, fruit cocktail. Can you imagine uh, fermenting that? Fruit juices, hard candy, sugar, high fructose syrup, and possibly other ingredients, including crumbled bread. And the bread supposedly provides the yeast for the Pruno to ferment. It originated in and largely is confined to prisons where it can be produced with limited selection of equipment and ingredients available to the inmates. The concoction can be made using only a plastic bag, hot running water, and a towel or a sock to conceal the pulp during fermentation. Wow. The end result has been described as bile-flavored wine cooler. De- Why? Depending on the time spent fermenting, the alcohol content is between 2% and as high as 14%. Huh. It said it tastes like vomit. That's all we need to know about this. Drink of the day. This shit right here. <laughs> it's fucking better than my grandma's sauce. Mount on, I mean. Uh, uh, we got to throw in sandwich it somewhere. Pa- it, in the pairs, it pairs well with a sandwich. They can really taste the fucking, you know, the things there. You know, the... Uh, the flavonoids? <laughs> the notes. <laughs> We went camping one time, and I don't think you were there. And um, we went to the store, and all they had, like, in big cases was Coors Light. So we grabbed two 55-can cases of Coors Light, and there was about a dozen of us. And we're thinking, oh, we're fine. We got back at, like, 1 p.m., napped, ate and shit, and then had drinks. By fucking, like, 6, we were done with the first case, and nobody was feeling anything. No, because it's water. I used to joke about it being water. You're like, you can throw a popsicle. I couldn't believe it. I was drinking it at one of my friend's graduation party. She had a little pool party, and she had a bunch of Coors Light. Drinking it and drinking it, and it was great because we were in the sun and in the pool, and it kind of kept you hydrated, but I didn't feel shit. Nothing. And, and then she was like, well, throw a popsicle in it. We'll call it a summer cooler. Tasted better with a popsicle in it. Kind of like a, an orange beer or something. But then 
you didn't feel anything. It was just basically alcohol tainted water with the smallest taint. Yeah, I want to see how much now. Coors Light alcohol content. Don't fucking lie to me, 4.2. Bullshit. That's complete fucking bull. All right, get, here. Two fucking um, Heineken's fuck me up. 5%. Get out of here. You mean Heineken's got 0.8% more than a fucking Coors Light? That's completely. They're fucking lying, dude. It's, it's total like lie. fucking. It's a total. It's 1.3 done with their stupid can. Remember would... they had their can? Oh, yeah. That, like, when it got cold, it got blue, the mountain. <laughs> yeah, that was the can yeah. we were drinking. Stupid. Oh, look, it's nice and cold now. The mountains are blue. Yeah, and those are the cheap beers at the ball game and shit. Yeah. It's like, why even bother? Why bother? Those are the ones that make you pee, 100%. Oh, my God. Terrible. you're just pounding them down. Like, you're basically pounding 12 ounces of water every time. I probably <laughs> drank six or seven in that, like, two-hour period and didn't feel a fucking thing. And then we went taking pictures, like, walking on rocks with, like, dangerous shit, and we were fine. You'd get more uh, fucked up stupid. off of Zima. Yeah, Coors yeah. Light, the most worthless. It's, it's worthless. Yeah, I've had the Pruno at Folsom Prison, and I've had it in Alcatraz, Attica, and all the other eight prisons, but nothing. Be well, <laughs> apparently she sounds like fucking. <laughs> <laughs> apparently she sounds like fucking <laughs> Macho Man. <laughs> but nothing. Beats the leasing horses in here. <laughs> You should have Macho Man in jail. <laughs> <laughs> the nothing triggered me, dude. <laughs> triggered me when I was writing it. I heard it in my head. <laughs> Behind the reinforced bars and concrete walls, Alcatraz holds many dark mysteries. My aunt used to babysit us, right? Like during the summer and stuff like that. When I used to get together with my friend Chris, we used to just laugh constantly. And he slept over the night before. And Clint Eastwood's Escape from Alcatraz was on. Yeah. You know how the TV was on the floor. And we weren't that tall. So it's like you're standing next to the TV. And we would point at the TV and go, Alcatraz. <laughs> and, then, and then we thought it was funny to say, Alcatraz. And then we would just start laughing. So and then the next day, my aunt is watching us. Like, we're in the living room running around and shit. And then I just kept pointing at my aunt and going, Alcatraz. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then my mom came home and instantly slapped me in the face. And I went, what the hell? Why did you do that for? And she said, you kept telling your aunt, I'll get your ass. <laughs> I go, Mom, we just thought the word Alcatraz was funny. Oh, my God. How, how? <laughs> when, you, when you really hear it, though, like it kind of sounds like that. Alcatraz. She thought I was saying, I'll get your ass. <laughs> I thought of some shit in the shower. I don't know what it is. But, I mean, before I even put my foot down in the shower, I'm like, yep, here we go. It's like zen or something, man. I don't know what it is. Water is an energy. It's a conduit. Moving water, it's clearing. So you can mm. really, like... Clears the blockages. It, it really does. Yeah, it seems like any place that is near water or there's a certain rock, too, right? That is yep. like a conduit. Yeah. I'm fucking having a casual drink and I had one drink and this is my third trip to the bathroom. It's fucking unbelievable. Oh, you got an old man bladder now. I mean, it works fine, you know, but like, just chill out a second, absorb the nutrients. <laughs> like, do I have to fucking go into the bathroom three times for a drink? That's why it sucks being in New York City and having your own drinks along the way. Yeah. You know, because that's what I do. You can't drink at bars. You, what are you going to pay? 10 bucks for a vodka and cranberry. And it's just it's like, whatever. So, you know, I bring my magic water. And uh, yeah, there are those times where like something happens or the bar is full or something. They're going to find somewhere else. And, you know, after having one fucking shot, it just doesn't stop. How, like are, coffee. Coffee how is it. the bathroom Pretty. situation in New York City? Do you have to pay or is it rare to be able to go use a bathroom? It depends what area you're in. If you're in the Lower East Side that you know that you're going to find a dive bar soon on a block. Each block is a dive bar. They don't even really look at you. But I went to the super gallery last week 
in the Lower West Side, which is sort of kind of fancy. And there were no dive bars anywhere. And the galleries I knew weren't going to have bathrooms. So how can they serve wine and stuff at galleries and not offer you a bathroom? What are you supposed to do? There's bathrooms at galleries about one third of the time. And when it happens, you're like, yes, especially there are some galleries I've gone to where before you walk in the door, outside the door to the left and the right are just garbage cans, ice and water and multiple beers. So we see that and we know there's a bathroom. We're all hanging out and having some drinks, you know. <laughs> so it's determined but, by if there's a bathroom there or not. <laughs> if there's not a bathroom, you have a drink and you move on. Yeah, it sucks. The bathroom situation sucks. Yeah, it could be better. I think like in England, they have these bathrooms that pop up out of the fucking ground. And you can pay and go pee. And then it just like all this water sprays and cleans it and it goes back on the ground. Oh, yeah. That's for dudes, right? It's like uh, for guys, they can walk up and just pee in it, I think. Yeah. I mean, I feel bad for you fucking girls, man. Because, for instance, the gallery night that we were talking about, I had to go so bad, dude. I had to find like a fucking cove, make sure nobody was coming. And I had to go pee. That's the thing. For but, women, we can't just do that. No. We can fucking unzip, boom, back up, done. Nobody knows. And you just, you have your hands in your pockets, you're looking around. But girls, you know, it's a process. It's a whole process. It's a whole process. And if you're not balanced properly, you piss all over your (laughs) jeans, you piss all over your skirt. You mean, you just could get it everywhere. We're not good at aiming. Can I tell you about the chick that peed like a fire hydrant? So my friend, he's a little gnome dude. He's a short little dude with a beard. But he has a rap with girls like I've never seen. I don't know if Brad Pitt is this fucking smooth. And we had a group of people. We'd go to galleries, clubs and stuff. And he would always be with a chick in the back. And we're just standing there with our fucking beers going, how the fuck does this fucking... Not, you know, I'm all set, but like, you're mystified, you know? I'm like, let's all go to the arcade on 24th Street. And he brings this fucking chick. You know, she's cute and whatever. And he's flirting with her and everything. But I'm pissed. I just want to get and play games. So I'm I'm leading the way and they're those two are behind me. And then all of a sudden I hear them stop walking and I turn around. We're on the sidewalk. She goes up against the car, like squats, lifts a little bit, and it came out like a fire hose. <laughs> This would have put out the fire of London from 1883 or whatever the fuck. She really had to go. But it was flying everywhere. (laughs) And I was, (laughs) thank God I was about 10 feet away. But the force of this thing, anybody within six feet backing up with his hands in his pocket, oh, whoa. (laughs) I've never seen anybody pee like that. And then they got kicked out of Barcade. She was starting to fight with the bartender. And then the bouncer comes over and I'm like, she's your problem, dude. I backed up. And then they had to leave. I played a game. He got her a cab and shit like that, but never seen anything like that. He should have known after that urinating incident that it was trouble. If I pee 10 times tonight, I don't know if that would equal the volume that came out of her. It wasn't like a little tiny stream. It was like if you took uh, the tube from a fucking paper towel and blasted water through it. (laughs) It was going everywhere because then the fucking light from the night, you know, and shit. It's just all the sparkles of the shit spraying everywhere. <laughs> the nighttime, man, let me tell you. Oh. The nighttime. <laughs> and they wonder why the streets of New York City smell like piss. <laughs> But the hot subways are the worst, Ugh. you know, in, in the summer. So I used to work downtown at a video store in the financial districts. So it was all like crazy people. And um, our delivery dudes would get us like vodka and shit. So we'd be fucking drinking, the three of us, like at the counters and playing movies and laughing and shit. And then he got us one night McDonald's too, near the end of the shift. So I had vodka and all that and then McDonald's. And then I go to the subway and I'm sitting there. It's 120 degrees with the hair dryer blowing on you. It was so fucking hot. Nobody was really around. So I scoot down to the end of the bench, to the left, to the right of me is where people would be coming in. So I, I was sort of farther, you know, a little bit farther away from the entrance. And I puked everywhere. Like I leaned over and puked off the side of the bench. <laughs> and then I walked down the end of the fucking keep 
going away from it. And then this rabbi dude sits down like in the middle of the bench. He's like looking around and then he starts gagging, dude. <laughs> he went way far away. <laughs> I would have too, man. <laughs> but it wasn't that I was plastered or anything. It was just like suddenly you stepped into a shower on nuclear hot and you have to stay in there. Yeah. And with clothes on. It was just that. Yeah. Oh. yeah anyway. <laughs> Why did you know? the rabbi cross the road? <laughs> <laughs> to get away from Jamie and X puke. <laughs> it's McDonald's and vodka cured puke. Prison nicknames. They call me flamethrower. Butt naked. Buffy the bear. Delicious. Ricky Minaj. Hiana. Big D. Snipe life. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. <laughs> like if somebody told me fucking, you know, water gun glasses Mahoney is coming after me, I'd be like, what? <laughs> and usually it's one middle name. John killer fucking whatever. Right. This one sometimes is like three or four adjectives. Right. And then like a noun. Right. You know, do the other prisoners go like, you know, Harriet hair dye down in cell block B. She's real badass, man. You don't want to mess with Harriet hair dye. Or is it Harriet herself going, they call me Harriet hair dye. And I'd go, and what is she going to do to me? Squirt hair dye at me. I just wonder how it works. It might not be nefarious. That might be the fucking person who takes some Kool-Aid and make your hair all nice and, you know, like exactly. the Joker. I went to the Empire State Building and I can't see so good. My eyes are going crazy because of these glasses. I can't see, God damn it. Let me see. I'm putting my fucking glasses. I cleaned them off too and it's, I can't even believe the fucking clarity. Wow. Like before, <laughs> before it was like... <laughs> Because I'm not used to cleaning my glasses because I, I wear them when I'm sometimes watching TV or, or editing for sure. So and you then look like a serial time. killer then. You got the big fucking walleye smudged ass glasses. They're kind of big, but they look like Buddy Holly glasses. Uh, and they're all smeared of. with schmegma and stuff. Oh, yeah. They're just smeared with everything. And uh, it looked like I was looking through a VHS oh my and God. now it's like 4K. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't even believe this. I can look in the right corner and not fucking see blur. Stand up and tell the class, what do you want to do with your life? I want to rock. So when I went to Catholic school, you know, there are nuns. And uh, there was one particular one we called Twisted Sister because her eyes were fucking like cross-eyed. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. She was tall. Couldn't tell who she was looking at. And she turned around and go, aim, aim, who, who's talking? I don't know what the aim thing was, but it was like M, like um, oh. but aim, aim, M, aim, who is that? You know, and you were like, oh, fuck, does she look at me? You know, right. so I used to call her Twisted Sister. What if we had a group called the Twisted Sisters? You know how we were talking about the sisters from yeah. Shawshank? Yeah. But what if they're the Twisted Sisters okay. and there's something weird? S-A-W shank. Do you want to write that now? Mm-hmm. U-H saw shank. Yep. That's it. Yep. Dale's demonstration. Okay. Yep. All right. The Shawshank. It's even better than sham wow. It really is. Because it's, Shaw shank. It's going to have a saw and a shank, but so much it's more. It's going to have a saw that can cut through steel. Yeah. You can get through the bars. Yeah, man. Gather around, everyone. Gather around. I've got a product for you. No, because we can. It's almost like as if he had like a like a little stand on wheels, and he stops, and the prisoners come around, and he can be doing his thing. Okay. And then once in a while, a prisoner can say, "Fuck you." That's not what it is. And he'll go, "Yeah," and he'll do something. Like we can have interjections from right, people. and he could be like, "Oh, dude, let's do it." That's okay. It. In the yard, yep. where they get to hang out in the fucking fences, where. Andy Dufresne was putting his rocks on yep. his pants. Like, the yeah, and a plain catch. Billy the Closer Bookman. Hey, fellas, get off that weight bench. Get off those folding chairs and follow me. I got the deal of a decade, century, millennium, and 30 counts of a lifetime. Well, what do you fucking got? Yeah, what the fuck? Who cares? And then he can get into it. What I have here for you, gentlemen. They're not gentlemen. Is, is going to be loose and fast. And don't have to put up your ass. A little bit janky. A little bit janky, but reliable. <laughs> reliable is great. You want shit that's reliable. Like a Swiss Army knife. 
a monster compared to that. Right. But so it's like a Swiss army knife on steroids? On roids and ramen MSG. Ramen's so deadly. <laughs> It is deadly. And it is perfect because you know that's the, the soup of the prison. It can open your bottle of Riker's Vent Pruno and even use it as a writing utensil. And okay. iron bars, iron. Okay. I honestly don't know what happened there. That was weird. Are you still recording? Is it still all right? Yeah, it's still going. I have a shot glass I haven't really tapped into. I'm going to do a half a shot. Okay. okay. So let's do a half a shot to all the listeners. Half a shot. Raise your fucking glasses, pack your bongs, and uh, three, two, one. Nostrovia. Nostrovia. This is how we do it. Both the 90s. I'll give you a snack in an hour. Damn, every time I come out here. Roll sound. Rolling. Sound production, take two. Hey, fellas, get off that weight bench. Get off those folding chairs and follow me. I got a deal of a decade, century, millennium, and 30 counts of a lifetime. What the hell you got? I'm glad you asked. What is it? What I have here for you gentlemen is loose and fast, and you don't have to put it up your ass. Step right up, step right up. Let me show you this new yet sophisticated, a little bit janky, but reliable premium item. Introducing... It's like, it's really shiny and great, but it but sucks it too. It might be, take some work to work, but that's okay. Introducing the UH saw shank. What does it do? Do I have to make 458 license plates to get this thing? <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of license plates. It really is. <laughs> like a Swiss army knife on roids and ramen MSG. It can slice the dice julienne and works like a power mower on pedo inmates and even guards. That is just the beginning. Today you'll see it perform miracles as it can open your bottle of Riker's Vinpruno, saw through cinder block and iron clip, and file that hangnail that's been irritating you from washing those piles of cafeteria trays. Can it deter the Twisted Sisters from assaulting me in the boiler room? It can shank, it can crank, spank, clank, and wank any skank. <laughs> <laughs> Karen fucking T. It's up there with fucking... <laughs> it's up there in fucking Hemingway. <laughs> But how is this going to help me emotionally when times are tough? I mean, I miss my kids and multiple baby mamas. How will it help me in the dark times? It will be your pal to the end. You can write your family or friend with a built-in pen. It even has a titanium stapler to staple that letter of yours or hang your favorite poster of Kate Beckinsale before she banged Pete Davidson. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, and we'll be done with it with this. So Matt, Everybody in Cellbox, you know, B has fucking been watching Underworld on our... And then people start vomiting? <laughs> a couple of vomits, yeah. Okay. Pete, they're, they're fucking slagging you off. Oh, yeah, we're talking about <laughs> Raccoon Eyes about the block. Oh, my God, I want to fight him so hard. Oh, my God. Okay. I just want to punch his fucking eye and just keep punching it. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Love and fire. Love, like, and strong on him. Yeah. How about Underworld 1, 2, and 4 or something like that? Okay. Like she, she left, I think, for 3 and came back for 4, maybe? Underworld. Okay, this is the, okay, the fourth one is Underworld Endless War. That's an anime. This one, Awakening, is, is 5. She's in 5. She's in 1, 2, two and five. 5. And 6. 1, 2, 5, and 6. I didn't even know there was a 6. Have you seen it? No. How many fucking lichens are you killing in six <laughs> movies? <laughs> the fucking werewolf pop is not me. I mean, you know. Don't you think she kind of dropped the ball missing episode three and four? I mean, wh- why is she one, two, five, and six? She might as well ran the gamut, girl. Abomination. Man, she banged him? Damn, everyone in cell block B has been using Underworld 1, 2, 5, and 6 as her spank bank material. <laughs> <laughs> Underworld Blood Wars. Yeah, that she's a yeah, exactly. I like how we had to research this shit. <laughs> well, no, she's in one, two, five, and six. <laughs> what about like colors? We have it in crimson, cell block gray. A prison uniform comes in a variety of different sizes and types, including jumpsuits, scrubs, shorts, and jeans. 
Some are to be worn. Scrub sounds good. What colors does it come in? I'd like it to match my scrubs. I think orange. Orange? Fluorescent? Yeah, at the rave, if you wore that, you'd be, you know, you wouldn't get stomped on them. Yeah. Yeah. Fluorescent, orange. Reflective? Silver? Mahogany? And camo? And camo, yeah. Sponsored by UH Corp. So weird being in the clank. Back meets her cellmate. Look at this bitch up in here. <laughs> that sounds like Scatman Crothers who turned into a fucking ghetto dude. <laughs> Instead of kick the can, it's like, you motherfuckers want to kick the motherfucking can and shit? <laughs> Imagine Scatman Crothers being a fucking Northsider. <laughs> on the corner of Rudy, so I'm trying to get fucking Boston baked beans, you know? <laughs> Let's think about the scene, though. You're, okay. you're going into I'm the going cell. to my jail, and, and as I'm going, they're in their cells yelling at me. Yeah. Do, you want a, do you want a sandwich, or do you want to come over and have a sandwich? <laughs> that was easy. This shit isn't easy. I hope everybody realizes when they listen to the final product, we get all these little dots that make up the spectrum, the yeah. galaxy. Yeah. is not easy. Мы должны вернуться на базу и переводиться. Ты будешь один солдат. We had multiple people live downstairs, and they came and they went. And then Natasha moved downstairs, and she was this Russian chick. And whenever anybody rang the bell downstairs, for some reason, it was connected to ours. So we could see who was buzzing in. And she would have the most monstrous... These dudes were like tanks with a head. And then in the morning, you'd see them go, the dudes go outside and smoke cigarettes, like victory cigarettes. So she had a ton of dudes. She was crazy. Oh, so and she, she was had, a she prostitute, had, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, we kind of explored the ideas of what she is, but she, she worked at bars. But she just brought home dudes all the time. And she had a stripper pole. We went down there for Thanksgiving or something. And we brought food and she was cooking something. And then there was this giant stripper pole when we were trying to play Mario Brothers. You know? <laughs> Wait a minute, you're she playing Mario wild. Brothers at her house while she had a stripper pole in the middle? Three or times a year, we invite the people downstairs the second floor to come up and hang out with us you know we're like let's go down to her place and then we went down there and we're like holy shit dude it was like a gothic like what we do in the shadows her <laughs> living room was like a what we do in the shadows room with a stripper pole in the middle wow yeah that's kind of and, intriguing uh, though i'd have to hang out with her for a little bit she was cool the river, the there's a man walks the streets of london late at night the river, for Halloween, we passed out candy one night. She'd never done that. And we put out lights. We had Lord Such playing. And we're on the stairs. We're passing out candy. That was a fun night. Smoking weed. Yeah. She's never done that before. But And then she got in a fight with our landlords. I'm like, disaster. We're not. Yeah, we got to distance ourselves. And then she moved out. She sued them. It was like a court thing. It was crazy. She sued them? She was a crazy Russian dude. She was fucking What did nuts. she sue them for, though? Half of the rent or something. I, I don't remember. Oh. But she tried to get us on board, and we're like, no, we want nothing to do with it. Right. You, you guys know? have and been there for many years, so. And then she moved out, and then like six months, eight months later, you know, I'm at a club, and I go outside to smoke a cigarette. I go around the corner to smoke my cigarette and, and have some vodka. And then she comes up, and I don't know who she is because she's in the shadows. And she's like, do you remember me? And I'm like, no. Yeah, Natasha. I'm trying to look in the light. I'm like, okay. Like, it's one of those Larry David things where she probably thought, this dude has been living above me for three years and right. doesn't recognize me. And again, she was with a dude who looked like an SUV with a little head on top. You know, like she likes <laughs> these really weirdly muscular dudes. Like when I shook the dude's hand, because yeah. like I was on the list at the club, I went around the corner and I said, I can get you in if you want to guys come in and dance and, you know, we'll have drinks and have fun. He couldn't even really like reach out. He had to like <laughs> shift his body. Those big I don't arms. know. Yeah. But she was a weird Russian chick. Roll sound. Rolling. We got a pretty boy. Oh, look at the pretty boy. 
Don't you fucking loogie my way. I'm gonna make you my bitch six ways until parole. Well, that's a little bit too long. My watch is broken, I can't tell. But it's long. It's real long. Holy fuck, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what do you think? Torture me. The guard says, Get in your cell already or I'll throw you in the box. Bro, I don't know what you see, but I just came to do my time. You gonna do your time while getting hit from behind? Now toot that ass up! Robert <laughs> Pee Wee Skittles Smith. That's your fucking roommate, bro. My chest hairs are gonna drown you <laughs> with the sweat of my... The sweat falls from my chest <laughs> And we'll... <laughs> wait, 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 I like sweat falling from his chest. <laughs> this is sweat dripping from his chest. This is like red shoe fucking jail cell. <laughs> okay. Why not? Do you think any other podcast really does the extensive work that we do? No fucking way. No, no. You television writing... shows yeah. <laughs> do this yeah yeah <laughs> exactly yep oh man I, I would knock on the door but you know it's just plastic tape here I, what's going on with you maniacs oh come in come in mark i got a little letter here for you in a box a package don't worry i checked it made sure it's not ticking oh hi mark <laughs> oh hi mark <laughs> It's bullshit. I did not hit her. It's fucking bullshit. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Every time, the thing. every time Mark <laughs> comes, I hear that in my head. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. So if you could sum up this season... This whole season and yeah. and some words, what would you say? Better than I ever thought. I wasn't sure. Without a loss of, of laughs either. I wasn't sure what was going to happen, man. I, it might not have worked. So the fact that it went as good as or better than I thought is pretty remarkable. Yeah, 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 I don't. I can't get that deep like you can. Call me Fire. I'm calling me Fire. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Just get goofy cartoonish. Here we go. How many soulmates have you had, Judy? I lost count after thirty. And call me Rustfire. Okay, Rustfire. Uh, are you on the top bunk? See that pile of flaming hot Cheetos? Yeah, that's your bed. Okay, let's do it again. That's half the room. Half the room is filled with bags of flaming hot Cheetos. Yeah, that's your bed. One more time <laughs> and, uh, like, deal with it, bitch, okay? <laughs> that's half the room. Half the room is filled with bags of flaming hot Cheetos. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That's half the room. Half the room is filled with bags of flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> yeah, that's your bed. Okay. okay, that was great, but she popped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your bed. <laughs> I can't fucking do this. <laughs> it's good. It's good. When you first go into prison. Like when mm -hmm. they first brought Andy Dufresne in prison and everybody's like spitting on him and yelling at him. That's what this yeah. kind of is. <laughs> okay. We got us a pretty boy. Oh, look at the pretty boy. We got us a pretty boy. Oh, look at the pretty boy. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to move on. Just go a oh, one. Two, a one, two, three. Okay, that's all I want you to do. Are you ready? Hit it, Rust Fire. A one. <laughs> a one, a two, a one, two, three. Uh. Hit it, Rust Fire. A one, a two, a one, two, three. Oh, uh. <laughs> that's great. Okay, little bonus for you, Jay. 
No, <laughs> you know, that's the funny thing. There's always, always six marks just chilling somewhere with a Ballantines. Ah, oh, nice. Well, save some of that glue for me and, uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll travel around with you. Oh, man, that would be fucking tits, man. All right, my friend, stay wacky, stay cool, and I'll see you. Yeah, and uh, keep your butthole pucker safe in here, okay? Good advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to whistle this straight from. Yeah, right. <laughs> Keep your butthole pucker safe. Yeah. <laughs> Action. You're a little too clean, girly. I'm gonna make you real dirty in the near future. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's always fun mixing it up. Hi, this is the last time I'm gonna call you this season. The maniacs from Umbrella Horlicks podcast are friends of mine, and well, I know how much they hoped you'd come to be a. Hmm. Let me try that again. Okay. The maniacs from Umbrella Horlicks podcast. I'm, I'm gonna say it better. The Maniacs from Umbrella Horlicks podcast are friends of mine, and, well, I know how much they hoped you'd come and be a guest or a neighbor on their show. Am I still... You can be like, what's this here? Is that something (laughs) else? (laughs) Or whatever, I don't know what you want. Yeah, you can do it however you want. But how is this going to help me emotionally when times are tough? I miss my kids. And multiple baby mamas. How will it help me in the dark times? (laughs) Are these chains really necessary? I only cut off my mattress and pillow tags. I hope I get a good cellmate. You might get lucky or you might just have a cell. Nope, lied. (laughs) It's so dark in here. Okay, sorry. Scratch that. Dinner and a show while the inmates eat glop in the chow hall. The diner. Wait, do you want me to say? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, this one's a little confusing, but th- yeah, you do say the dinner, and then the dinner. They I watch the dinner. Like, okay, yeah. Great. All right. Well, this is the character. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Dinner and a show while the inmates eat glop in the chow hall. The diner. No, fuck you, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> the dinner. The dinner. Here we is go. Right? Dinner and a show. While the inmates eat glop in the chow hall, the dinner, they watch other inmates fight. (laughs) Starting again. Starting again. Take 97. Here we go. Yeah, I was thinking, like, in my head, because it's, I'm assuming it's like a, it's essentially, it's prison wine, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So going, trying to make it sound more upscale, more of like a... Riker's Vino Pruno is in a class all it. I like it. When you say the word own, be like own, you know? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like at the end of sentences. Prison wine. <laughs> yeah. At the end of sentences, add, add that little twinge that, you know, like, Ugh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I'm going to go, go, on, go. I'm going to go on mute and just go ahead and we'll let you know if, if it's cool. All right. Riker's Vin ah. Riker's Vin Pruno is in a class all its own. Clean and refreshing, not like that prison schwill going around. Look at this, bitch! Who the fuck do you think you are? You watch your fucking face, bitch! Yes! <laughs> I was hoping you'd go full balls to the wall on that. And you you did. might be all right if you go to the clink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two years of acting school. <laughs> Mud, coffee. All right, quiet on the set. Camera speed. Sound production. And uh, announcer. An- oh, the announcer. Yeah, oh this yeah. Is like, you How know- do you want this voice? You know how at the end of Batman, the the, the TV show, oh, they'd like, be like, "Will J Maniac escape?" Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn this down ever so slightly. Okay. Will J Maniac escape? Can Beck fend off Frankie Full Court Hammer? Is wait. Uh... Will J Maniac escape? Can Beck fend off Frankie Full Court Hammer? 
Is this the ghastly end of our dynamic duo? Answers next season. Same UH, same mania. Okay, that's a wrap. Well, maniacs, there you have it. This concludes the writing sessions.